During this presentation on what you should know about open access, we will look at open access in the broader context of strategic scholarly publishing, so you can develop a clear plan that ensures you reach your target audience and publish in the most effective outlet that supports your career goals. With respect for Aboriginal cultural protocols, Western Sydney University Library acknowledges the traditional custodians of the unceded lands and waterways on which our libraries are located and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. The university works across many different lands and I'm currently on Darug lands. This session will look at what is open access publishing, the benefits of publishing open access, where to seek funding to publish open access, how to determine where to publish your research, how to find suitable high quality open access publishing outlets such as journals, an overview of the open access publishing fee support, including read and publish agreements, and an introduction to the publishing plan toolkit, which will help you strategically develop your publishing plan. Publishing open access means making scholarly publications freely available to everyone. It makes research readily accessible online at no cost and without access barriers. And by adding an open license, such as a Creative Commons license, the outputs can also be legally shared and reused. There are three main types of open access route. Gold open access applies to articles or books published on a publisher platform. Gold open access requires an article processing charge payable by the author, their institutional funding body, to make the research immediately open access. Next is diamond open access, which is a publishing route that doesn't require author or reader fees. These open access journals and platforms are often led by institutions or academic communities which use funding and subsidies from various sources to cover publishing costs. Then there is green open access. Green open access refers to self-archiving an article in a publicly accessible institutional or subject repository, usually after an embargo period, which is a temporary stop or ban on unpaid access to information. Green open access is generally associated with subscription publishing, where there is no publishing fee and where library subscriptions generally fund reader access. If you select the green open access route, check the publisher agreement for your author rights, what can be self-archived, and the embargo periods for public sharing versions of your work. Aim to retain the rights to your work. The benefits of publishing open access include increased visibility and reuse of your research, making it available at no cost to the readers, including researchers in developing countries, the increased potential for more citations and opportunities for research impact, compliance with grant funder requirements and open access policies, such as those of Western Sydney University, the Australian Research Council and the National Health and Medical Research Council, that it creates best conditions for interdisciplinary collaboration and improved opportunities for finding new collaboration partners, research opportunities and spin-offs, and that it fully uses the internet to accelerate research. When it comes to seeking funds for open access, if you intend to publish your article in a gold open access journal, you'll need funding to pay the article processing charge. There are a couple of options when it comes to publishing fee support. You can apply for grant funding from bodies such as the Australian Research Council or the National Health and Medical Research Council, or investigate institutional support by way of Western Sydney University central funding, which the library administers. So, if you are a Western Sydney University corresponding author interested in applying for open access publishing fee support, check your eligibility for Western Sydney University central funding. Visit the library website, go to the researchers menu and select open access publishing fee support. The cap on central funding per article is 2,830 Australian dollars. Check the publisher slash journal listings for a list of journal publishers and journal titles available under that publish agreement. If you find a suitable journal listed here, you can apply for funding when or two weeks before you are going to submit your article to a journal by clicking on Accessing Central Funding for Article Processing Fee Support. You'll be prompted to log in to Western Now to complete an online application form. 
When deciding where to publish, consider using a strategic approach. But whether you have started writing your research or not, start by thinking about where your audience will look for your work and consequently where to publish. What language they speak. For example, to consider translating your research into another language for your audience. Think about how your research will change the world. If there is funding available to publish your work and to attend conferences to promote your work. Whether you need to comply with mandates such as open access policies or work plan policy publishing requirements, for example, to publish in Q1 or Q2 journals. Then how to refine your search to quality journals that are most suited to your research. And check the quality of your journals to find the one most suited to your research that will maximise research impact. Check the aim and scope of each journal, whether it's been peer reviewed, indexed in major databases, the quality of its journal metrics and era submission guidelines. Check journal reputation, information for authors and how the journal publisher will promote and make your work discoverable. For more information on strategic scholarly publishing, browse the library's publishing plan toolkit guide available on the library website under e-resources. To help determine where to publish, in the Open Access Guide you will find a chart which outlines the least restrictive to more restrictive routes. So ideally you would be looking to submit and share your work as freely as possible, to get your work out to your audience as soon as possible, while retaining your author rights to make it easier to build upon your work. It's important to check the information for authors so you know what to expect in terms of how to write and submit your work and how and when you can share versions of your work and to review the publisher agreement before you select where to publish so you know if you need to negotiate the rights to your work. So let's work through this process. For each of the journals on your shortlist, check if they are included in the read and publish agreement journal lists or central funding journals publishers. Search by publisher, then by title or ISSN. An ISSN is a journal's unique identifier and is particularly useful for finding a specific journal. The beauty of these read and publish agreement journals is that your research is immediately open access and you retain the author rights to your work. Now, if you don't find a suitable journal in the read and publish agreements, you have a couple of other options depending on the availability of funding. If you have available funds, look for gold open access journals. An article processing charge is required, however, this ensures immediate open access to your published research. If you don't have available funds, check the directory of open access journals for diamond open access journals, which are free to authors and readers. If you still can't find a suitable journal, consider the traditional publishing route or, subs or subscription model, which supports green open access. Check the publisher agreement as to whether you retain your author rights to all versions of your research, as reuse restrictions may apply. If you're considering the traditional publishing route, use the Spark Author Addendum to start a conversation with the publisher about rights retention so you can build upon your research without needing to seek publisher permission to reuse your content. Another way of checking which and where versions of your journal article can be shared after it's been published is the How Can I Share It tool developed by Collaboration of Publishers. Now, if you need help determining where to publish, contact your school librarian. Armed with the information you need to determine how and where to publish, it's time to find suitable open access publishing sources. Be guided by the information on the library's Find Suitable Publishing Outlets page, which you will find by going to the Researchers menu and looking under Scholarly Publishing. If you only have a research question or title, consider starting your search on a platform such as Scopus Sources, which includes journal level metrics and enables you to search across journals, book chapters, conference proceedings and trade publications. If, however, you have both title and abstract, consider starting with Elsevier Journal Finder. Then also use Elsevier's Journal Insights, as it provides extra insights into the impact, speed and reach of journals. Use Elsevier databases in the first instance to improve the visibility of your research a Scopus data is used by the university and in most world university ranking methodologies. Let's look at how to use Scopus sources. If you intend to submit your work to a journal, use the field in your field of research code to find suitable keywords for searching the title or to conduct a subject search. Down the left hand side of your screen, filter your search results by open access, by site score highest quartile, for example Q1 or Q2, and limit the search to journals. Note that the journal quartile may differ from subject to subject, so base your selection on the one most suited to your research. When you have your search results, and to build a shortlist of suitable journals, 
Use the metrics to find high ranking journals. Generally speaking, anything higher than one is good, and the higher the number, the better. Use the ranking metric, for example, highest percentile, to see which quartile that journal is in. So if it's in the top 25%, it's equivalent to Q1, or if it's in the top 50%, it's equivalent to Q2, and also where it's ranked amongst other journals in its field. For example, if it ranks 20 out of 100 journals in its field, it's in the top 25% of journals for that field, which is equivalent to Q1. Later, you can use Ulrich's Web, a database listed in the A to Z database list on the library website, to check if a journal has been peer reviewed, to determine its frequency of publishing, and to confirm which major databases it is indexed and discoverable in, such as Scopus, Web of Science, Directory of Open Access Journals, or PubMed. You should do other quality checks to find a suitable journal, and this is where your school librarian can assist. Earlier I touched on read and publish agreements which come under open access publishing fee support available to Western Sydney University corresponding authors publishing open access. With read and publish agreements, articles are immediately available open access upon publication and authors retain the rights to their work. If you have special requirements for publishing, for example, colour pages, check with the publisher if this is an additional cost. For 2023, there are 12 read and publish agreements available. You will find these listed by the publisher on the library homepage under the Researchers menu. Look under the Open Access Publishing Fee Support for a link to the Read and Publish Agreements page. Here you will find a listing of publishers. Click on each publisher to access further details about that agreement. Under each publisher record, you will find a couple of essential resources. A link to the information for authors which outlines how to prepare your work for submission, Pay particular attention to this information when writing and submitting your work and a link to the Read and Publish Agreement journal title list, which lists the journals available under that publisher agreement. If you have a short list of suitable journals and their publishers, start by browsing the Read and Publish Agreement page. Browse for the journal publisher. When you find the publisher, click on the journal title list and then search or browse by the journal title or ISSN. When you find a suitable journal, submit your work using your institutional email address and ORCID. Using your institutional email address is essential, as it indicates your affiliation with Western Sydney University. Let's now look at the Publishing Plan Toolkit. The Publishing Plan Toolkit uses a five-step approach to help you develop a publishing plan suitable to your discipline, with the aim of maximising your research impact and engagement and supporting your career goals. The toolkit includes the core component, a publishing plan form, which you use to develop your publishing plan. This five-step approach to strategic scholarly publishing requires you to think about which publishing outlets are most suited to your research, your intended audience, your research goals, and expected real-world research impact, the requirements you need to comply with, for example, to publish open access, available funding, and your publishing timeline. With this information in hand, you then build a short list of suitable publishing outlets. Then, check the quality of your short list of publishing outlets to determine the most suitable quality outlet to maximise your research impact and engagement. Ideally, before you start writing, follow the publishing outlet's information for authors and guidance for submission, so you don't need to rework your paper. Then, before you submit your work for publishing, Check again that you have addressed these requirements. Submit a cover letter with your work that includes the important elements, including the ORCID and affiliation for each author. Consider self-promoting your work before publication, upon publication and after publication. The toolkit includes a range of options for communicating your research and to consider adding to your publishing plan. Then when it comes time to track research performance, the toolkit describes how to bookmark your awkward record and researcher profiles and use suitable key metrics to evaluate your research performance for grant and academic promotion applications. Contact your school librarians if you need support with your research metrics. If you are interested in using the publishing plan form, the scholarly publishing consultant will invite your school librarian and supervisor as a team to support you in developing a publishing plan and throughout the publishing life cycle. 
We've reached the end of this presentation. Please visit the library website if you'd like more information on Open Access Publishing Support fees, the Publishing Plan Toolkit, Open Access or other library guides. And contact the scholarly publishing consultant or reach out to your school librarian if you're interested in using the Publishing Plan Toolkit to develop your publishing plan. We welcome your feedback on this presentation. Please use your phone's camera to scan the QR code on screen to complete a short online survey. Thank you.